Hello everyone, thank you for joining me once again. Another day, another thought for the day. Today being Thursday the 11th of June. Now, um, I want to talk to you today about a rather sombre subject, a rather serious subject. I want to think about death for a wee while. Now, again, apologies if you're settling down trying to get a good night's sleep and uh, this is your nightcap, as it were. Uh, I hope this doesn't disrupt your sleep uh, and I hope it doesn't give you nightmares either. It's not meant to do that. Um, but please bear with me just for a few moments as we have a singular thought about death itself. We are told in the Bible that death is our enemy. Uh, indeed, we're told it's the last enemy that will be defeated by the Lord. So in other words, we have death with us right until the very end of time. And it comes to us as an unwelcome visitor. Not only an unwelcome visitor, but it comes often as an unexpected visitor and very often an uninvited visitor. And of course, we, we read of Christians who quietly submit to death, which is, of course, what we should all be doing. Um, because, after all, what is death for the believer but an entrance into glory, an entrance into heaven, an entrance into the presence of the Lord forever and forever? So we have that faith, we have that assurance, if we believe what we say we believe, uh, we have that strength to faith death uh, with, a, with a quiet submission, uh, knowing that we have this wonderful hope for all of eternity. But that said, what do we make of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane? Here we are talking about quietly submitting to death because of our faith. Well, here's the Saviour himself, and he's not quietly submitting to death. It is the exact opposite. He's in agony at the very thought of it. Here he is in the garden. He knows his death is just a few hours away. He's about to be arrested and tried and crucified. He knows that's before him. And here he is in the garden in agony, pouring his heart out before his father. In fact, he's in so much agony that uh, he's sweating drops of blood. Now, that's nothing miraculous, friends. Uh, this is a well-known medical condition. It applies to people who are in extreme pain, extreme agony, or, or torture victims even. Uh, they sweat drops of blood. There's a, a fancy name for it, which I've forgotten, but it's a medical condition. Uh, and this is the condition that our Saviour was in. In fact, Martin Luther the great reformer, uh, he says, and I quote, uh, no man feared death like this man. He was talking about Christ. No man feared death like Christ. So what's going on here, friends? Why is the Lord in such a state? Well, it concerns the contents of the cup that he has to drink, figuratively speaking. Because as he prays in Gethsemane, um, looking at Luke chapter 22 here, he, he prays to his father um, in verse 42, uh, Father, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. So what was this cup that he wanted his father to take away from him? Well, friends, it's Old Testament language. We've got to go back to the Old Testament to see what this cup represents. And I'll do that for you just now, um, because you're probably not going to sleep tonight anyway. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 15 to 18. Just let me read them for you. Uh, the Lord speaking, thus says the Lord God of Israel, uh, take this wine cup. Okay, there we have it again. Uh, what is it? Uh, take this cup of fury from my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send you to drink it. This is what happens when the nations drink this cup 
of fury from the Lord. They will drink and stagger and go mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Then I took the cup from the Lord's hand and made all the nations drink to whom the Lord had sent me, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, its kings, its princes, to make them a desolation, an astonishment, a hissing and a curse as it is this day. Friends, this is the cup that the Lord Jesus Christ was asking if there was any chance at all, any possibility at all of him avoiding taking this cup of fury. It, it was full of things like desolation. Um, uh, it would be an astonishment to people. It would be a curse unto him. Uh, it would be a hissing, etc., etc. You can read the passage for yourself. So friends, um, when Christ is there in Gethsemane asking for the cup to be taken away, it's the cup of God's wrath that he wants, if possible, to be taken away. And of course, it's not possible for that to happen. So it wasn't really death that concerned Christ so much as God's wrath that he had to experience on the cross as he was being punished for all the sins of all his people, past, present and future. Friends, he had to experience the wrath of God on our behalf. He was willing to experience that wrath so that you and I wouldn't have to. And it was the thought of the wrath of God being poured out onto our Saviour that literally drove him to agony in the garden. So much so that we read that an angel had to be dispatched from heaven to strengthen him in that hour. Now, he knew that he was going to lay down his life. He knew that he had to sacrifice himself for his people. He, he, he knew that that's what his ministry was working towards and that that would happen. But friends, perhaps as the time grew closer, the truth dawned upon him uh, in all its reality. The, the penny finally dropped, as it were, and he saw with greater clarity than ever before what his task actually entailed. And it was the thought of experiencing the wrath of God that was almost, almost too much for him. Well, friends, I just leave the thought with you. The thought that if the wrath of God and the thought of experiencing it drove Christ into that state of anguish and agony. If it did that to our Saviour, what's it going to do to those who are outside of Christ, those who are away from Christ, those who have no angel to come and strengthen them, those who haven't even got prayer as a recourse to help them. Well, I don't know what exactly it's going to be like, friends. It'd be too terrible to describe. But I do know what it's called. Because when the wrath of God is poured out upon someone for all eternity, it's literally hell. So that's what Christ went through so that you and I don't have to. I don't know anyone who would willingly want to experience the wrath of God. If that's what they really want, well, that's what they'll get. But I don't know anyone who would willingly embrace such an experience. But the only way to avoid that is to take the path that the Lord Jesus Christ has provided. He is the way to God, away from punishment, away from condemnation, away from the wrath of God, which is going to be poured out on so many people 
whose minds are fixed against coming to the Lord. Don't be one of those people, friends. Please. Please. Think on these things and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, the way, the truth and the life. Thank you for listening. Keep praying. Keep washing your hands. Keep looking up. Keep safe. And I look forward to speaking to you again, perhaps on a lighter note the next time. Until then, bye for now.